and welcome to another Married to Reselling video. My name's Faye. I'm Simon. And together we are full-time resellers. Later on in the video, we're going to be talking about what is our most frequent comment here on YouTube and Instagram, so stay around for that. We'll also be showing you some recent sales from the barn and we're going to talk a little bit more about bubble wrap. Crate four. Yes. Crate four. It's a vintage Johnson Brothers summer chintz oval platter. That's the one that cost two pound fourteen. Yeah. Facebook Marketplace pickup. Uh, that sold for ten pound plus post, and that yeah. took nearly five months to sell. It was a big drop lot. Actually, saw one of those in the charity shop today, but left it behind. Uh, crate eighteen vintage Royal Dalton Provencal rim soup bowls. Four of them. They look like that. Yes. Dalton for bowls. Yep, that's them. They cost £1.45, sold within a month for £21.59. They are from auction. Then we've got this bag of beads. These are actually like bits of broken jewellery of my own. Uh, nothing special in there. Uh, they sold for £5.99 plus £6.95 post. Oh, they've gone expedited, have they? Yeah. Um, they sold within a couple of weeks. When you post those some of those beads are glass so okay. bear that in mind cool. uh, crate 32 it's a vintage cut glass inkwell don't flick the top bit okay do flick the top bit it just gets loose okay um that costs 36p and that sold for 9.99 plus post within two weeks Crate one. Yes. Casa Damani Portofino dinner plates. Four of them, a beige square. They only bought these this yesterday, last night, and they're already saying when when they're going to arrive. Uh, they cost forty nine p, and they sell for ten pounds twenty five plus post. Had those about three months, and then we've got crate twelve. Yeah. The Evesham teacups and saucers, four of them. Yeah, the ones with the cherries on. Oh. Yeah, turn yeah. them around. Yeah. There's red currants one side, or black currants. All the plates in here are the same, aren't they? Oh, they're saucers, right. they're not plates. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, that is them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they cost £1.74. Have been listed about five and a half months and they sold for 9.99 plus post yeah we've got loads of these so i started dropping the price because i hadn't sold any no and then these sold on etsy etsy for about 22 pounds yeah 21.59 i think they were and how much did they cost 178 and where were they from were they auction or charity shop uh, sounds like auction but it could be a blend yeah actually pricing. no there was i did blend some but we picked some up from the auction and charity shop in the same week so mm. yeah it's hard to tell but this is a blue glass sun catcher with like a fox walking across a branch uh, of a tree and it's vintage and it costs 36p from auction and it sold for £11.37 plus post to a repeat buyer within about two weeks. Then we've got these pencil leads. They're in this little tube. A vintage Conway Stewart London pencil lead holder with leads. That cost 44p and that sold for 8 99 plus post. That was from auction and that sold within two weeks as well. Then we've got these wine glasses. And I saw these in a charity shop at the beginning of this week. They um, they were actually signed on the bottom, um, J J G Durand. I didn't actually know the signature. I just thought, oh, they were interesting. They got a signature. They were only two pound fifty for three, so I picked them up. Unfortunately, one of them did have a chip, so that's gone in the glass bin. But these two sold for twenty two ninety nine, and they sold within a week. And they've got like a sort of frosted glass. They're French. Yeah. Then we have these vintage Hornsey Contrast salad dessert plates. They're given to us free to sell and they sold for $24.99 within a week. Then we've got this thing. It's a vintage Staffordshire pottery, the murder of Thomas Smith ornament. That cost £1.4p, sold within two months for £13 plus post. We had an offer for 10 but 
Yeah. You know, it's going to take a bit of packing. So I counted at 15 and then they counted at 13. And then we got this vintage Oliver and Bauer fruit salad and serving spoon fork set six of them i'll put a bit of bubble in before i send it just to keep them in place uh, that cost 77p that took about four months to sell and that sold for eight pound plus post i think that's the last of our uh cutlery sets isn't it that we seem to end up with <laughs> yeah, could, could be mm. who knows yeah. they seem to grow <laughs> crate eight yeah it's the tg green cornish oh. ware round cheese dish cheese dish oh the yeah That is a pepper pot. I know it is, but I was getting... <laughs> I'll tell you in a minute. Even you're not that silly. No. Did you, did you relist that? Yes, you asked me that like 17 oh. times. <laughs> cool, now I know the answer. I should have known the answer the other million <laughs> times. Right, this cost 44p, <clears throat> sold for 23.99 within three weeks. That was an auction pickup. It's got a crack in it, but it was declared. Crate haven't got a number so it must be in a box it's oh. those three toby jugs excuse any external noises building work going on outside yeah. oh it would be the bottom one wouldn't it yeah oh, oh my god oh. technique technique yeah. look at it let's have a look well the person that bought these GSP. GSP, yeah. They bought them the other day. They're in America. They then said, the message afterwards and said, can you send them to a different address? We wrote back and said, no, we've cancelled the order. You'll need to buy them again. Here's the link to buy them again. About two days later, they messaged saying, um, okay, do I need to reorder them or something? So we resent the same message and they're like, oh, we can't find them. So you resent the message again with the link. <laughs> the link in the message People straight, just don't straight to the item. But yeah, you know, obviously with GSP, you can't change the final address. We don't change any address anyway, but obviously it goes off to Litchfield um, and that's done. So. so these three Toby drugs cost a total of 25p. They're all the same, but um, like bigger, big medium, medium and, and small, small. <laughs> yeah they could be s allertons we're not sure because they're unmarked uh, but they cost 25p for the three and sold for 19.99 plus post within about five months yeah. crate 32 yeah vintage art glass bird paperweights it's pink it's not that blob thing no, it's not a blob, it's a bird. <laughs> we sent an offer and they kindly sent us a note saying thank you. This was given to us free to sell and it uh, sold for £7.19 plus post. Unmarked little pink bird. Little birdie. Crate 24. Vintage not attack side plates, four of them. Well, no attacky. Attacky, <laughs> whatever. What is it? Four side plates. Could it be these ones? Are they yeah. sort of squarey? Square, pale, yellow, gold. There we go. They cost a total of 40p and they sold within two weeks for £15. They were from auction. So what we thought we'd talk about today is the comments that we received and the messages that we're receiving quite regularly now on Instagram about selling ceramics breakables, buying from auction and kind of getting into that whole routine. It's something, if you watch our channel, it's something that we've kind of always done a bit of. I think going right back to some of our earliest videos, we were buying bits of bric-a-brac as well as the usual sort of charity shop hauls and all that business. But it's definitely something that we've ramped up and it seems that it's inspired a lot of you to kind of give it a try. We do it for fun. We do it to obviously to make some money. It doesn't always go right. And it's really, really great to hear that you're switched onto our channel and it's lovely to see those comments coming in. It gives us a little bit, we're, we're a little bit scared <laughs> because it sort of feels like a bit of a responsibility because you know we've talked about this kind of thing before but there are lots of negatives in terms of things going wrong refunds returns breakages all that sort of stuff um, but you know everyone knows that that stuff goes on so we don't tend to focus on it because we want to celebrate the wins yeah we do and also the reason for that is because we're here to really sort of share like what works 
and obviously there are things that don't work but more than anything we're here to hopefully entertain you whether you have us on in the background while you're working or whether you sit down to watch these videos with a cup of tea um, ultimately we just want to let you know that buying from auction following that whole process can be a gamble so what's interesting is simon just said we do this for fun and we do do this for fun but we actually do it to pay the bills this is like our job it's just we've chosen the more fun route to doing it that we that's what we think anyway yeah i think i kind of meant it's the most fun that i think we've had in reselling particularly yeah. particularly i think for you yeah buying from auction bidding at auction buying from auction it's the fun way to make a living reselling in in our opinion and our experience but everyone's different i think it's great hearing that so many of you are trying auctions again or for the first time um it's great that we've inspired you just don't get trigger happy that is one tip i will give you if you really want something you still need to set like a level like a, a limit don't just yeah. Don't just get overexcited and think, I want that, I want that, I want, I want that, because there's nothing more disheartening than getting your lot home and realising that you've overpaid. Yeah, a, a good, no matter how good the lot is, a good lot can turn into a bad lot when you pay too much. The same applies to bidding on multiple lots. So the chances are that you might not win all lots that you bid on, but it does happen that you do. And I've been there <laughs> where we've had to make multiple trips to the auction for this humongous load that I've just bought. <laughs> also, another tip, and it's kind of all on the same kind of um, subject, is don't bid on too many things that you can't handle. So start slow, bid on a couple of things, bring a couple of things home, work through them. Don't end up with a unit, a garage, a dining room, a hallway just piled full of bric-a-brac from auction because it can turn into an absolute nightmare when the fun stops stop <laughs> another thing to know is when you're buying bric-a-brac from auction it's often dirty i've seen some disgusting things in bric-a-brac i've seen probably 40 year old food that's gone moldy on a plate that's not been washed um Oh. I've seen, I thought I found someone's ashes once, but it wasn't. It was a little pot of like sand from the Isle of Wight, but it went everywhere. Um, <laughs> I found loads of stuff. So just also bear that in mind. Do you want all of that stuff that's going to need cleaning and it's covered in dust and God knows what in your house, in your living space? Yeah, prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Yeah, I think that's right. Also, if you do get to view items at auction, it's often um, a good thing to do to view in advance, uh, purely because with bric-a-brac, it's often breakable and so many things can be chipped. At our auction, there's no one checking, no one stopping anyone from putting chipped and broken things into the auction. It's down to you when you buy it, that you, that you pay for it and you take it home. And if you're bidding online, the auction house will give you the opportunity to ask questions. There's always a contact on the auction and that is ultimately what they will say to you should you win a lot and be unhappy with it they'll say you have the option to ask questions or view it that's interesting because i think you've asked questions on the auction before mm. i have and i've never got an answer oh, i've always got an answer have you maybe you don't say please oh i do <laughs> i do say please I'd, I'd love to hear your experiences of, of auctions and um, if you're getting into it for the first time or if you're getting back into it after a bit of a break let us know how you get on what you're looking out for i would love to tell you to, what to look out for but every auction and every lot is completely different i mean i thought i was onto a winner recently with some wedgwood didn't go and view it brought it home and it was really crazed so much so that it was on the dining room table and i could hear it crazing a tip i would give um around the finances is that the hammer price is one thing but you must not forget about the fees if you're bidding online there's going to be an online fee there's the hammer fee your auction house could also have other fees so just be really aware of of what it is as a rule i just tell Faye and think think in my own head just multiply the hammer by 1.5 and you'll be really really safe but do check with your auction house first because that might not apply to you if you're buying older stuff there might not be that applied so check that out because that'll mean you won't incur as many fees when you get your lots home or back to the office or lock up or wherever you list uh, i would go through things one at a time so if you bring in multiple boxes back which are different lots just focus on one box at a time uh, if you watch our videos you'll know that i take out broken things most of the time i take out 
things that I know that I can't sell. But there's always things that you think might not sell, but I'll just check it. So do your research first and then just list what's good enough. And don't forget eBay fees, postage, all of it adds up. So don't you've got to be making money on these things. So if you can buy things for pence and sell them for $9.99 plus post, great. But also don't just list everything that you get because some things aren't worth it. But like I said, some broken things are still worth it. I've sold chipped Wedgwood. I've sold chipped, goodness knows what. I've, I have sold chipped mm, items. Like so figurines or, or ornaments. So you just need to research things sort of one by one. And don't forget to check sold prices. Don't just go by what is for sale on eBay. Go by what's sold as well. We come across quite a few examples of uh, brands and models. So for example, of um, like tea sets where there's a lot for sale on eBay and none sold. And so if you're not looking at the sold, you're just gonna join that big list of people that are trying to sell that item where there is absolutely no interest in the market. And don't don't um, be afraid of doing your research at the auction. If you're actually there looking at the item before bidding or uh, like a viewing day, that's what people do. The people are running businesses. People have been doing it for years and years and years, and they might be walking around with a notebook and pen, writing notes down because they, they the knowledge is in their head or they might be looking on their phone on their ipad just no everyone going to the auction is shopping for different reasons and no one's going to say oh no you shouldn't be looking that up like yeah. like some people are afraid to do in the charity shop we're not yeah. Or, yeah, auctions is completely different. I would say 95% of people that are at auctions are traders, one way or another. Resellers, traders, people that are looking to flip the items. And that's, that's what very, the auction very, house are. That, yeah, well, just like a charity shop, but people yeah. don't quite seem to make the connection. But yeah, it's very, very normal for people to be seen to be looking to make money on items that they're viewing at auction. And the auction house are just resellers as well, because a lot of them do house clearance and they clear the houses, they put the stuff in to sell to other people and they're, they're earning off the top of that. So yeah, do not be afraid to do whatever research you need to do. If there's an electrical item or an item that needs you need to test, you can do that there, it doesn't matter. Um, have a good old rummage, have a look, but whisper. If you're with someone else, whisper to each other. Yeah. Be like, oh, there's something good in there. Don't shout it out so everyone else can yeah. hear. Yeah, if you see a lot that you like the look of, um for us we're usually maybe i'm photographing the lot numbers or writing the lot numbers down when we visit don't make it audible don't don't be really obviously interested in a lot if you can help it if you've got people around you just be discreet because you don't want to encourage competition the taylor swift snow globes are a really good example of that i remember when you spotted them like the last thing we wanted to do was alert other people that there was 300 pounds in two snow globes just sitting there in the top of a box looking very very inconspicuous we scuttled off didn't we <laughs> as soon as we as soon as we'd sort of done our research yeah yeah we did but there's, there's so many different things to take into account when you're bidding at auction um just if you've got any questions you want some tips then let us know uh one of the things i will say is we never actually go to the auction and bid there in person and if you're not sure how to bid online just go to the auction house website and all the details will be there but if you if you need any advice or if you want to share some exciting stories or tell us about your first trip to the auction or something amazing you picked up or if there's some fails just let us know we'd love to hear them so our message really is have fun with the auction bear in mind that everything's not a win we've made losses at auction definitely on lots we've not won stuff we really wanted because yep. the prices has just gone silly and if you saw our last video where we broke down the profit of one particular lot which was the black tub um you'd have seen we sold something like 20 items 25 items the average profit for those items was £12.60 after everything. Per item. That's per item, yeah. And that was off at the cost of £17, I think it was, something like that. Now, what we didn't tell you in that video was that I'd actually done a lot more work on a lot more lots. And I was ready to show you all of that. However, something went wrong with the filming. But we do have all that information. So if you'd like to see it, and it does include fails or slower selling lots if you want to see some more figures uh, that simon was just explaining about then let us know in the comments because we'll get it in a video to you soon so car boot season is upon us imminently our local one three minutes away that we never go to i mean can you believe it resellers that don't go to car boot sales 
It's opening on Sunday, your birthday. I saw the sign earlier. Will we go? Probably not. However, we are going to ramp it up this year and start going to car boots. We need to pull our finger out and make an effort. We do have some car boot videos that we've done that um, Simon's going to link uh, so you can see our experiences. I'll put all the links to car boot videos that we've done in the description down below because if you're new to our channel, there's, there's every chance that you haven't seen those. And we like to think we have a bit of fun at we the do. car boot sale. So uh, yeah, check those out once you finish watching this one. But we're definitely going to ramp it up this year and do more. I don't know when we're going to start, but garage sale season will be soon as well. And we're excited about that, aren't we? Because we we do prefer those to car boots because they do start later. Crate three, or it could be crate eight or four. It's the little chicken. Oh, I can see it. It's crate three. It's the mayonnaise pots, vintage nesting chicken mayonnaise. It says mayonnaise on the front. There we go. Mayonnaise. I think this is the last thing out of all the face pots that we had. It is. Yeah. I thought this would go way quicker than it did. Yeah, it's cute. Isn't it? it is cute. Uh, it costs a total. A lot of... cuter than a lot of the rest of them. Yeah. Uh, so cost two pound eighty seven. Sold for five pound plus post just to get rid. That has been. That took about five and a half months to sell. Bye. Uh, crate twenty three. Top watched item. Ooh. It's the field mouse teapot. The village collectibles by Annie Rowe. This has been top watched for ages. That cost 97p from auction, sold for 14.99 a plus post within two and a half, three months. We had had offers like 15 pound free posts and stuff, but I just kept rejecting them because you yeah. know, it's got to, it's got to be packed up. Great five. Yeah. Dalton Bruce Oldfield teacup and saucer times four. This is the last lot of um, Dalton cup and saucers, yeah. the Bruce Oldfield blue and gold pattern. These cost £2.27 and sell for £14.99 plus post within three months. I sent the last lot exactly like this. What a bubble wrap round. Um, and off it went and that was what I'll do again. Uh, the Hornsey Palatine contrast tub. Yeah. Five dinner plates. Oh, these were 50p and they sold for 26.99 within about two weeks crate 32 oh yeah it's the va thing what are we doing about that the what thing the decanter that said don't post them. oh yeah so well let's get it out what is it crate 32 it's the vintage dartington van decanter with cork stopper this is a canter oh, yeah, are you having a man look are you just looking at the yeah, front staring, staring straight at it Crate 32 is doing me dirty today. Uh, yeah, so this has sold. And then randomly, I went onto our like burner email address that we use for eBay. We don't put our actual email address we on We never there. go on the burner email no. address. So I thought I'll log in. <laughs> randomly, 21 hours ago, uh, we had a message sent direct to email, nothing in eBay saying i'm away till march please can you post it in march say the 4th of march i mean if i if i did that well a we never do that if someone messages for ebay and says can you delay it we say no we can't delay it we're we're measured by our shipping so we've sent it now we cancel it on your request but couldn't do that via the ebay messaging service in terms of they, they sent us a direct email now, if I just cancelled it, then obviously I've got no sort of paper trail that the, there was a custom issue with the customer's address. Um, if I sent it, which I wouldn't anyway, so I wouldn't, wouldn't change the address anyway. Uh, so I've uh, just sent a quick message to eBay for business on Facebook, and we'll see what they say. It's an interesting one. Yeah. Because, yeah, they could, uh, I could wait, and then they could, you know, eBay could mark us down. I don't know. What would you What would you do? Let us know in the comments. What would you do? Either way, it cost thirty six p, and it took three weeks to sell for fifteen ninety nine. Crate thirty. Ooh. Vintage Wood and Sons Woodland Blue Center Scene Twelve Inch Serving Platter. Woodland. Woodland. There we go, that cost 97p. That sold 14.99 plus post within two weeks. Crate 13. Ooh. Vintage Sutherland China Tea Trio sets, cup, saucer, and side plates. Yep. Oh, and 
Andy. This cost £2.42, so this must have been from a char charity shop, I think. And that sold for twelve ninety nine plus post. It's going GSP to Italy. Is it, I, I think this is when you bought all those trios. Oh yeah, from auction. from auction. And they've said, please be careful with the package. Sturdy big box and mini bubble wrap, thanks. Maybe we should tell them we keep getting skanked on the bubble wrap, so we're gonna have to send them 38% less. So what have you got to say about bubble wrap? Come on, because I don't know. I don't get involved in the bubble wrap, so what's new? Okay, I'm waiting for a little bit of information and I'm really, really excited about doing an update video. Sounds a bit secret squirrel. Well, the thing is, you know, I don't want to say too much now because the update video, hopefully a lot of people find it interesting. If you found the scammed video, it's about five videos back, you can just go back through the channel and have a look. If you haven't by any chance seen that video, check it out. All about bubble wrap and how everyone's getting ripped off which we are, uh, but if you like that video, then you're gonna like the update. That's all I can really say at the moment. Let me know when it's going out and I'll, uh, I'll watch it. Uh, Crate 16. 16, yep. Macallan Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey Glass times two. Ooh, this has got the etched yeah. on the front. These cost 2 .99. These were from a charity shop and they sold 14.99 plus post and they're going to GSP, they're going GSP to America, and they took four months to sell. Yeah, they are rich, you can't see them. I think we thought we'd sell those in the lead up to Christmas, didn't we? Yes. They didn't. Crate 23. Yeah. Vintage Pyrex bowls times four white with a blue rim. There we are. They cost 49p. They took two months to sell for 14.99 plus pay. Crate six. Vintage shot glass times three, crystal star glow atomic starburst. So, not there, not there. What are these? There they are. Uh, mm -hmm. nine, four, nine. I'm not seeing three shot. What are they? These? These. Four. Can you get? Yeah, but can you just show me them? That's not those. It's not those. What are they? Oh, here. Oh yeah. They're in your hand the whole time. Well, I think they were in my hand the whole time. <laughs> Let me put this back. It's one of the life's mysteries when your brain's just stopped working completely. Yeah. <laughs> they cost fifty-five p and sold for fourteen ninety-nine plus pays within two months. They were from auction. Crate fifteen. A vintage Royal Ascot saucer, job lot of 12. Left hand, left hand. Thanks. These cost 43p for all of them and they sold for 15 99 within two weeks. Crate 17. Yep. Vintage Oriental planter times two. Oh, yeah. it, under your chin. Are they under your chin? Ooh. No, they're in crate 17. Under your chin. Right, chin. There we go. Two, little, two in there. House plant pots, jardinier. Jardinier. They cost four pounds from a charity shop. They took two months to sell and sold for 16 pound plus post. And on the same day from the same charity shop, I got something else, crate 18. Yeah. Vintage Rayware chicken biryani bowls, three of them. These cost £2.50 and sold for £17.99 within the same period of time. Then we've got Hornsey Palatine Contrast Tub again. Got to run out of space here. Yeah. It's the teapot. Oh, it's emptying nicely over mm. there. This cost 50p and sold for £19.99 within two weeks. No, Oops. about 10 days. Mm. And then finally, crate 17. Yes. Vintage Pearsons of Chesterfield Baker dish, oval stoneware beige. Sent a lot of offers on this one, I think. Mm. This cost 52p from auction, and that sold within four months for 7 99 plus post. Don't forget to let us know your auction experiences, and we'll see you again in the next video. Bye.